This uh, little video is about immobilised enzymes. So, to demonstrate what an immobilised enzyme is, I've got my enzymes, these are the pink things, and immobilised means trapped onto an inert matrix. So that could be something sort of flat and sheet-like, like perhaps a collagen, or it could be inside more of a sort of a jelly-like bead. Now the thing about immobilisation is that they don't move. That's what immobilised means, it doesn't move. An immobiliser on the car stops your car moving. Now why on earth would you want to do that? Well, partly in industry particularly, enzymes are quite expensive. So if you uh, want to use an enzyme, you've then got to go to the faff of sort of separating it out from your product. Um, and if you want to reuse it because it's so expensive whereas i'm hoping this is going to work if you've got your substrate colliding making a product which i'll represent as a set of balls the substrate gets converted into product and in a continuous system you can flow your substrate across and surprise surprise your enzymes are left behind and you can use them again and again and again. So you can set up a continuous system whereby your substrate flows in, reacts, makes your product and your product can flow out again and that, that will be a whole lot more efficient. So reusability is a, a real key thing. So you can use them again and again and again because of course enzymes are not changed by the reactions that they undertake. The other thing is, sort of for cheapness, the enzymes can be reused. So if you're using an enzyme to, for example, um, make lactose-free milk for people who are lactose intolerant, you can pour your milk in here, your lactose reacts with the enzymes, it breaks the lactose into galactose and glucose which can flow out of the other end with all the other things that are in milk still there all your fats and the milk colour and all the rest of it it all just flows through but you don't have lactose now you've got lactose free milk so that's a, a, an advantage for definite the other thing is that just purely by immobilising them it makes the whole enzyme structure a bit more stable which means that the bonds don't break quite as easily uh, in denaturation so it means you can often use them at much higher temperatures now obviously at much higher temperatures your substrate coming in has much higher kinetic energy and can collide more frequently with the enzymes and make your product far more quickly so um, that, would, that will speed up your industrial process same thing with pH, some reactions actually you know, cause uh, hydrogen ions to be released or that cause a lack of hydrogen ions which affects the pH, which could affect the enzyme structure when they're immobilised, they're just a bit more stable, they don't tend to denature as easily those bonds holding the tertiary structure together don't break as easily now there's not another application, so that would be for sort of, you know, something like uh, clearing apple juice with pectinases or making lactose free milk with uh, lactase being the enzyme. But there's another application which is for, for us in a biosensor. So a biosensor is something that is used to detect a biological molecule out of a biological mixture. So uh, the probably the best example of that is a glucose biosensor for diabetics. Um, they are tiny machines. Obviously, reusable doesn't really come into it because what you're doing is you're putting a, some blood, which is a mixture of red cells and glucose and urea and hormones and a great variety of all different things. And the great thing about um, the biosensor is that if you're just looking for the glucose, 
the enzyme is specific and will only react with the glucose, which is fantastic. Now we don't reuse these strips, these biosensor strips, because you're using a, a, a blood product and it's just not feasible, you'd have to rinse off all the rest of the things um, and also blood clots quite quickly, so reusing is not an issue here. But what is, is this specificity to allow it only to react with the glucose because that's what you're trying to work out what the concentration is. The other thing is that even at very low concentrations of glucose, so if I take out, you know, most of the glucose out of the blood, it will still react with the enzyme and therefore you can still detect it. So even teeny tiny concentrations of the molecule can be detected. And that might be important in things like drugs testing for sports. The other thing is that um, you don't really need to know the details of how a biosensor works, but effectively there are a few layers to a biosensor. So things that are big, like my red blood cells here, will not pass through a partially permeable membrane. So only small molecules will go through. Out of that, we get our reaction, our products, which head off to the next layer. And the next layer detects the concentration of product and transforms it by, with a transducer into an electronic signal. So not only can we detect any old concentration of glucose, even very low ones that things like Benedict's wouldn't uh, pick up, we can detect it in a coloured mixture like blood or urine without the colour change mattering too much. And when it goes through the transducer it's then going to get sent to a digital readout so you will get a very accurate and quantitative reading from that. So biosensors, absolutely fantastic. So in exam questions what do you need to think about? You need a, a definition of uh, an immobilised enzyme, so this is an enzyme trapped on an inert matrix. You need to think, what context am I looking at this in? Am I looking um, in the context of an industrial process where I'm putting the stuff in and getting my product out and it's maybe continuous and it might be that you know you put your stuff in and you then taking your enzyme out and your products are all together. Um, you, you can layer your enzymes up. We could have a layer of pink enzyme, we could have a layer of blue enzyme, and we could have a few reactions going on at once. Or am I thinking in the context of biosensors where reusability isn't an issue? Stability could be, if you think about it. You need to be able to use a glucose biosensor if you're a diabetic in the Antarctic if you're a diabetic in uh, Egypt. So real extremes of, of environmental temperatures and those enzymes still need to be stable. So you need to think about your context and pick the advantages that go with that. Good luck.